All right, now let's get to question four. So question four, this is your essay. Okay, and everybody panics about it because it's 17 for content and three for synthesis. And if you write it properly, those three are in the bag anyway. Okay, so describe the location and the structure of DNA hmm, and the process of DNA replication and the significance, wow, of this process for mitosis. So we've got four paragraphs. We've got DNA location, we've got two is the structure of DNA, three is going to be DNA replication, four is going to be the significance to mitosis. But remember, you mustn't put numbers in an essay and you, sh you definitely do not put bullet points. Okay, even if you are running out of time, you can put your, instead of uh, uh, writing a bullet point, you just write each fact per line, and, and you don't need to make full sentences, if you, only if you're running out of time, but you do not put bullet points in an essay, they will deduct marks, okay. So, here we go, let's start. So, first thing we're going to do about the location, so we're going to say DNA is located and you all know this, in the nucleus. That's our nuclear DNA, and we have in the mitochondria. Mitochondria, that's our, MR, uh, um, our mDNA, or mtDNA, but did you remember chloroplasts? We always seem to forget the poor plants. So you're going to find DNA in the nucleus, mitochondria, and chloroplasts. All right, now, our next paragraph, the structure of DNA. So we start off with DNA, and you know this, man. This is easy peasy. DNA is a double-stranded helix molecule or helical molecule but just stick to helix, it's easier to, to not get confused. Molecule that consists um, of nucleotides. All right, I'm going to put these in different points so that, or, or different lines so that you can see each fact. So, consists of nucleotides. Each nucleotide has a phosphate ion. You can also call it a phosphate group. Okay. Um, a deoxyribose sugar. and a nitrogenous base. Okay, now we know, there we go. We've got our phosphate, no diagrams in an essay, by the way. I'm just refreshing your memory here. So that's all you're doing. And if you're saying that this sugar here is a deoxyribose sugar, all right. So you must know the structure of a nucleotide. And that's what they're checking here. Do you know the structure? Okay, now, um, DNA has four nitrogenous bases. We have adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Remember that in RNA we have uracil. So DNA has thymine. All right, comma, with a complementary base pairing of adenine to thymine always, and guanine to cytosine, 
Okay, held together by weak hydrogen bonds. Okay, people, there has been nothing difficult here so far. And this is already eight marks in the bag. Okay, where is the DNA located? All right. Is it double-stranded? What does it look like? You learn this. You know this. It's a double-stranded. It's twisted. It consists of nucleotides. It's got adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine with a complementary base pairing, uh, uh, being adenine to, uh, to, to thymine and guanine to cytosine held together with weak hydrogen bonds. I mean, like, wow. So, again, money for jam, marks for, I don't know, what can we say? Marks for quick, easy giveaways. Right, so now let's get another color here. Okay, now our next one, sorry, was DNA replication. Okay, so now we're doing this part. So our DNA replication, you must learn this, you will get it in an exam. So DNA replication takes place during Interphase, okay? The DNA double-stranded helix <laughs> molecule, and I know you've said it already, but remember, now you're explaining rep DNA replication. The double-stranded uh, uh, helix molecule unwinds and unzips, okay, when, next point, the weak hydrogen bonds break between the complementary bases. Okay, so these bases that you've just spoken about here, okay, all you're saying now is those weak hydrogen bonds break between those complementary bases, all right? Now, next point. Each, let me get some space here. Let me just leave, I want this whole, I want you to be able to see this whole part here. Okay, so now, each DNA strand becomes a template um, to make a new identical <laughs> duplicate. By acting, I mean, attracting, acting, by attracting new complementary um, nucleotides um, that float freely in the nucleoplasm. Okay, so what have we got? We've got our double strand, okay? That double strand, unwound, it was wound, it unwinds, it now separates. And all these nucleotides that are open here, okay, attract little... phosphate, pentosugar, nitrogenous base. These are free nucleotides that float in the nucleoplasm. And they will then come along, and if that is A, then 
you're going to have a T comes in here. And if that is G, then a C will come in here. These are going to be your free nucleotides, and it attracts those new complementary nucleotides to come and join them. Okay, now, the two resulting, so when they're all full, the two resulting DNA molecules... Each, and this is important, each contain, and I'm back down to the bottom of the screen, each contain one original strand and one new complementary strand. Okay, so a new strand, and, uh, I mean an original strand and one new, and remember it's a complementary strand, okay, and what is really important is that each molecule, so in other words each DNA molecule, each, D, each molecule will be an exact copy of the original DNA. Done, done and dusted. Sorted. You have to know this anyway. And if you've got to put it in an essay, well, you've got your six points there. Easy peasy. Come and go. There we go. All right. Now, what was the last part we had to do? Oh, let's just have a quick check here where the marks are. So it takes place during interphase. Okay, it's a double-stranded helix, and that's going to unwind and unzip, so that gives you two. Um, the weak hydrogen bonds break, that's one. Um, the DNA strand becomes a template, so both of them, each of them. Okay, so that's another mark there. Um, attracting new complementary nucleotides that float freely in the nucleoplasm. The two resulting DNA have one original, and they have one new, and they are an exact copy, done and dusted. So what they normally do is they'll allocate a certain number of marks to that part of the essay. So, and then they will then give you the marks, but they can't give you more than the maximum. The maximum here was about six or seven marks. Okay, but you've got all the facts, then you have to know them anyway. Right, let's go with a nice bright orange. Um, what was the last one? It was the significance of the process of meiosis. So, um, the significance of the um, of the DNA replication process to mitosis is that DNA is doubled. That's what's important. It is doubled so that each resulting daughter cell receives the same DNA to ensure, I mean really people, you know all of this, to ensure that they are genetically identical. Cool. And what is important here is that the DNA is doubled so that each daughter cell receives the same DNA and that they are genetically identical. Done and dusted. Bring that 20 marks. All right, so um, that's the end of paper two. And in my opinion, it was actually a very, very fair paper. If you knew your basics, you could have sorted this paper out. 
There's certain things that as we went through uh, um, last year with our students and our learners, everything that we went through during the year, sitting here behind this desk, behind that camera, was asked. So I hope our, our learners did and learned what we worked through. And I hope that you go through all of this as well. When we say to you, this is often asked, please learn it. Guys and girls, please learn it. All right, so 